Hey guys, my name is Chris Borachi, welcome to Common Time 20. Today we're going to talk about the initial costs of the Troublecaster, about Fender still making traditional ashtray bridges for tallies, about Harley Benton sore exotic PRS making Fender or Gibson inspired guitars, I'll show the official spec sheet of my 53 reissue Telecaster, and I'll give you some ideas for a solid rocker tally. If you enjoy what you're seeing here, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell and check out the description box under the video. You'll find all kinds of additional infos, signal chain, uh, gear links, whatever you might be interested in. And of course, also my merchandise, if you want to support the channel, that would be amazing. Let's start with Alan Mitchell's comment. Chris, I love your phrasing on the instrument. Thanks so much, Alan. I really appreciate it. Uh, question about how much did you spend on your initial build of the Troublecaster? Thanks. Okay, so here's the guitar. Originally, it had a different bridge and two Gretsch Filtertron pickups. Uh, those are the only things I changed about the guitar over the years. Um, yeah, it's I cannot really tell <laughs> at this moment because I didn't buy all the parts um, at the same time. It was not like one big purchase because that would probably stick like you would remember that like oh 500 euros or a thousand euros or 200 euros whatever um i bought the parts as the project went on the first thing i purchased was the the body which was uh, the body in a harley benton guitar kit a t-style guitar kit so that was the first purchase which is not super expensive then also, um, uh, what was the second? Probably the bridge and the pickups. Then I decided to go with the uh, the Bixby. So that was uh, the next thing. This is, by the way, the licensed, the Bixby licensed version, the Korean version. Um, it's not the very expensive one. It's the a little less, but still expensive one. It works perfectly. So I bought all the parts um, in that order, I guess. And then the pig guard, which is, um, which is something I shaped and the electronic cavity and everything, the, the pots um, and the, and the tuners. So, um, I can put it on screen. I can just go through and check out the retail prices, but it's so long ago. I cannot possibly tell right now. Okay. The next one is, uh, it's from Jörn and it's in German. <laughs> so, uh, I'll read it in German. I'll probably speed it up because most of you guys will not understand the word and then I'll translate it. So, Ich liebe die Telecaster, aber es gibt eine Sache, die ich daran weder verstehe noch gut finde. Diese unsäglichen Kanten an der Stegplatte. <lacht> Welchen Zweck haben die, außer die Gitarre schlechter spielbar zu machen? Ich denke mir, dass es irgendetwas mit diesen Stegreitern zu tun hat. Äh, bei einer Tele mit modernem, stadt stadtartigen Steg sind diese Kanten entweder abgesenkt oder gar nicht vorhanden. Warum hält Fender, nicht nur Fender, daran fest? <lacht> okay, so Jörn is talking about the uh, Ashtray Bridge of Tellies, the, the traditional... Um, bridge on tallies and uh, about the edge why it it's like standing up why is it even there still it's uh, there's no point in having that and he says like modern tallies will not have this they'll have it like uh flush or just sort of rounded off or whatever um he doesn't like it he doesn't feel like it helps with the playability <laughs> and it just looks weird to him well Jörn, uh, the reason why Fender and other brands stick to this original design, this ashtray bridge design, is because people love it. It's as simple, including me, to be honest. Um, at this point, after quite a few years of mainly playing tallies and T-style guitars of you know, sometimes other brands like this one, I just got used to them so much that if a tally I'm playing doesn't have the original ashtray bridge, it doesn't feel like a tally to me anymore. 
it can still be a great guitar, but it just doesn't feel right. And um, I'm not only talking about the visuals, the ergonomics, especially when I'm standing up, like playing the guitar with a strap, I always lock my pinky right here on the uh, lower edge of the ash ashtray bridge. Uh, that's why I also relic this guitar here, because I mean, I would probably need, I don't know, 20 years of playing this guitar to make this happen naturally, but yeah, I hope you can see it. Yeah, but this is exactly the spot where my uh, pinky would rest all the time. Obviously when I'm like shredding, not really, but when I'm just playing rhythm, when I'm playing with a pick or, or picking, like with the fingers, I would, I would have my pinky here and that's my anchor point really. That's what helps me to find the strings faster. I know it's weird and I don't need this on other guitars, like when I'm playing a Strat or a Les Paul or whatever, or a modern guitar, I don't need it because I'm not used to it. But on a Tele, where I feel that the body is flat, there's no armrest, there's no tummy cut in the back, um, it's a Tele that it has to have that. Okay, so I made this video on uh, my Klon clone, this pedal. I made this pedal and uh, I really like it. And uh, I just mentioned in the video where I compared it to an original Klon KTR that this is a clone, yeah, sure. But it's a DIY pedal that I built for myself. I mentioned in that video that I am not a big fan of cloning stuff and then selling it for profit. I just don't like the idea and some of the viewers uh, got really upset like not like super angry but kind of like yeah right um, hmm are you sure about that and um, I found it interesting because if you just imagine like you come up with an idea a business plan or I don't know uh, something I don't know a new software or a song a painting whatever it is and someone took that idea and uh, and sold it. I mean, would you not feel really pissed? Because I would be definitely. So yeah, I I was kind of um, wondering why people would not just sort of relate to that statement. But hey, it's all cool. And then a few interesting comments came, which I wanted to talk about. First is from Dog with Two Bones, which is a great name. <laughs> So how do you feel about Harley Benton making and selling cheap copies of Fender and Gibson's legendary inventions? And there's another one from uh, Ed Raposo. I kind of agree with you on the making money out of someone else's design point, but how about guitar companies that have been making Strat and Tally copies for decades like Soar, Exotic and so many others? Uh, yeah, so many others, like PRS with their single cut design, etc. So many other brands um, that make guitars that are related and heavily influenced by very um, successful like 50s and 60s designs, whether it's a Gratch, a Gibson, a Fender, whatever, any of those old brands, right? The thing is that not even a Harley Benton is a one-on-one -on -one copy. Fender's Stratocaster and Telecaster body shape is not copyrighted, like it's not protected by law, right? That design is free to use. That's why so many companies will not bother changing it a little or whatever. They just stick to the same or a very similar shape and just put a neck and a different headstock and different pickups or whatever different radius on that guitar. So those guitars are very similar sometimes, but it's pretty much just because of the body shape, really. Because if you pick up a Soar, an Exotic, a Harley Benton ST, whatever, 62, whatever, those guitars do not feel and sound like a Fender Strat at all. They look like one, but they don't even want to copy an original Fender Strat. They just want to give 
people an option, like an alternative, which is very similar in a way, but still a very different experience, or it just sounds very different than an original Strat. So it's the same thing with the uh, PRS uh, single cut design, which has a very similar shape to a Les Paul. But if you like have them next to each other, they do look very different. First of all, they feel very different to play, uh, and they sound different too. Um, a PRS, SC, whatever, will not sound like a Gibson Les Paul. I'm not saying one is better or not or whatever. It's just a different experience. So that's exactly what I meant in that video, that if you get inspired by something that you really like and improve it in a way that makes you feel more comfortable with it or just inspires you more, that's totally fine. That's what everyone does everywhere, whether we're talking about uh, software development or medicine stuff or, you know, art like music or whatever. To get inspired by something and do something kind of similar, but still different, that's fine. Like Harley Bentons do not have a nine and a half inch radius. They don't, they don't feel at all like a Fender. They look very similar to one, but um, it's a very different experience. And that's fine because they just want to to offer something at a very low price point, um, which appeals to people. Obviously, they wanted to sell those guitars. And if it looks like something your eyes are accustomed to, you will find it pretty and you will probably want to have one. So it all makes sense. But still, except for the body shape, nothing is the same on a Harley Benton as on a Fender Strat. Not the pickup sound, not the, uh, the, the neck feel or the headstock, obviously. All these are different. The same thing for a Soar, which always feels more modern and more, well, ergonomic than an original Fender Strat. Same thing for an Exotic, which are crazy good guitars and they just do not feel like a Fender. The body shape is pretty much the same. Yeah, but that's, that's it. So long story short, if you want to see actual clones of famous things or like the same exact circuit or the same visuals or whatever, then you'll have to go on like Alibaba or whatever those uh, online stores are called where you can get like actual fake replicas, which is not something I recommend doing. And I, yeah, um, that's what I meant. When someone just copy pastes something that someone else created. That's just um, lazy, illegal, and just not very tasteful, if you know what I mean. Ron Swanson and quite a few other people also asked for the spec sheet of my tally. That's something that always comes up every now and then on Instagram or here on YouTube whenever uh, I check the comments. It's like every week there's one like, hey, what are the pickups in the tally? How's the neck shape on the tally? Uh, how much does it weigh, etc. The weight is something I didn't address in my uh, video on my Telecaster. At least I think I didn't. Um, it's a pretty light guitar. It's 3.2, 3.3 kilograms and um, that is pretty light like for me that's absolutely perfect that's the ideal guitar weight it feels very light on the shoulders but it doesn't feel like it's made out of uh, you know pine or something that's like ridiculously light Fazak's Putra hi Chris I was uh, just wondering 
about the tonal differences between a Squire with go-to tuners, bone nuts, stainless steel frets, Fender Custom Shop pickups and wiring, go-to bridge and full brass block um, and the Fender Custom Shop itself. There is no generic answer to this question because each and every guitar will sound different. Sometimes those differences are really small and um, sometimes you would say like, yeah, whatever, close enough, it's pretty much identical. But there are sometimes crazy big differences, even between two guitars that have the exact same specs. So uh, I remember like playing in the custom shop room at Tolman, um, like, I don't know, five, six, pretty much identical uh, strats like the specs were pretty much identical, like different finishes and whatever, but the pickups were the same, same type of neck, thickness and same wood, same whatever. And they just did not feel or sound the same at all. It is impossible to say which will sound closer or if they will sound identical if you upgrade a Squire and compare it to a custom shop. Um, I also have guitars like this one, which like the the base of that guitar didn't cost a lot at all <laughs> and like i have a hardy band and i have my uh the white uh, explorer style guitar which is also used to be a harley benton and i modded the hell out of it i have the uh this one the cheapest gibson ever <laughs> built uh modified it all these guitars are as enjoyable to play and to listen to as my two or three expensive guitars um there's no point in comparing like which is faster, which is, you know, it's not really a race. I think if you if you can find a squire that just really speaks to you and you really feel comfortable on it and you love pretty much everything about it, uh, which is definitely possible. It's it is those guitars are all over the place. So you don't have to pay a lot of money to get a really, really good and inspiring guitar. If you find one where almost everything is perfect and you only feel like, yeah, maybe the pickups or maybe mm, the switch is like too stiff or little things, just go on and, you know, when you have the, the budget, just swap those things if necessary and you'll get a fantastic guitar. And this last one came from Michael Robinson Jr. on, uh, on Instagram. Man, I am obsessed with your tally tones and videos. <laughs> Thank you, man. Um, I want to buy one to play classic rock with, but have limited knowledge. Could you put me on a solid rocker tally? Now that's exactly my kind of question. Talking tallies and rock tones. Sweet. So I would definitely recommend going for a 50s style tally because those pickups uh definitely push the mids more than like a 60s style tally which have a bit more of a sparkle 50s style tallies will have that nice upper mid range that twangy tone that like you know from like country players who use a tally but uh, those pickups also love drive pedals and love overdriven amps so if you want to have like um, a really nice guitar that pretty much works out of the box and will sound great with like, um, um, I don't know, an overdrive Marshall or whichever overdrive pedal you prefer. Um, 50 style tallies. Awesome. You can get like the player um, edition, the uh, the Mexican, the, the most affordable Mexican ones. Uh, the classic vibes are great. The Squires, um, obviously all the USA models are great. So whichever um, fits your budget and um, and makes you want to play more, <laughs> that's the right model. Uh, maybe try to try those 50 style tellies. And if the bridge pickup is still not thick and, and uh, like full sounding enough, there's one pickup I found, which is uh, which is great. It's the Jerry Donahue Samuel Duncan bridge pickup, which is it's a normal uh, tally pickup. So it's a single coil. It's not a humbucker. You still have the tally flavor and tally vibe, but that pickup has way more low end and oomph and mid range, like lower mid range than most of the normal tally bridge pickups, which is great. And that's the pickup I had in my first tally um, in my Roadborn, like Mexican made uh, Roadborn tally, uh, because I was using that guitar in a, a classic rock, like top 40 cover band. And um, I, I had to cover like Metallica and Alex Cooper and whatever, all those uh, styles and punk rock and whatever with that tally. 
So I wanted to make sure that it, even though it's a tally, like it has a single coil and everything is traditional, but still I can just have that, that nice palm mute tone that you want from like a, a raw guitar that uh, Jerry Donahue, Samuel Duncan bridge pickup just gave the last, you know, 10% to the guitar, which was fantastic to begin with anyhow. So yeah. That's that's what I would go for. You guys take it easy. Thanks so much for all the awesome comments and reactions and sharing your thoughts and your stories in the comments. I really, really appreciate it. Please keep them coming. Meet you down there in the comment section and see you next week in a new video. I'll be back. Bye bye.